can't argue with physics. Place is covered in snow, course closed. Still going to do a video because I'm dedicated. Uh, driving is a nightmare. My feet are soaking. First tip of the day, when you're out scraping snow off your car, don't wear night trainers. Get golf shoes on. Feet are soaking. Right, so the Eureka moment was brilliant. Here comes a snow plow. This is exciting. I like this. Um, the Eureka moment was excellent. A lot of good feedback on YouTube about that. Um, aiming left, pulling the club down, and two forces pulling in different directions. Great. Today I'm going to elaborate a little bit on that, and we're going to um, put in there uh, the Endless Belt Effect, which is from Homer Kelly's Golf Machine book. Um, if you don't know Homer Kelly, Google him. He searched golf or researched golf for 30, almost 40 years, and wrote a book when he was doing it, and it's fascinating. Uh, so, endless belt effect and also angular momentum, centrifugal force as well, so it's quite, it's physics, physics does not lie, you cannot argue with physics. You can't argue with physics. And that's what happens in the golf swing, the club head gets thrown out through centrifugal force and angular momentum, and that is just physics, that's exactly how it works, and the only reason that we hit miscues or errant earn golf shots is because we tamper with physics. We should not tamper with physics, but we do, because we'll do anything as humans to get that club head behind that golf ball, to get that ball to go up there. Um, so we're going to get fired in here, and I'm just assuming the course is closed, so where I'm going to do the video, I don't know. Morning, Jamie. Good morning, Steve. Busy? Oh, I rushed off my feet. Okay, so guys, obviously we can't get on the golf course today because of the weather. Course closed due to snow. Disaster. Anyway, my last video, as I've just mentioned, the um, Eureka moment, which was great. I aimed everything left. Everything aimed left. And as I came down, I came down and it was much easier to feel the two forces going in different directions so my shoulders were going one way my body was going the other way and then the body pulled the shoulders back due to impact guys lots of great comments about that on uh, youtube i've had many people commenting on it saying they're getting on really well with that let's take it to another level so this is a eureka moment advanced okay and this is from homer kelly's book the golfing machine he talks about the endless belt effect Okay, so imagine this, here we go, endless belt effect. Drawing this out for you. This is a conveyor belt going round and round and round and round and round. And on this conveyor belt is the golf club. Okay, so the golf club, this is the handle of the club and this is the head of the club. Okay, and it all moves in the same direction at the same speed. It sounds dead simple. So this is my conveyor belt going along this way, like so. That's my golf club. This here is the grip end and this is the club end and it all moves so the grip and the club move in one direction at the same time round and back round and back let me give you something else let's just use this so this ends club head this ends grip so it goes along so you can see the grip and the club head move in the same direction at the same time and round and continue round and so on but you get the idea that the hands and the head move at the same time. So that's basically your golf club. Okay. Centrifugal force at impact throws the club head towards the golf ball and creates club head speed. So we don't have to generate any more club head speed at impact because centrifugal force is going to take care of that itself through angular momentum. Okay. So let's let's look at this again. Hands, club head, both going at the same speed. Okay. Then when we get to the circle at the end, get to the circle at the end, the hands continue at the same speed, but the club head moves faster because it's going round the tight corner. 
So it goes same speed, same speed, same speed, same speed. Then we start to turn. The hands continue at the same speed as we were before, but the club head travels faster to catch up. But I've applied no more force. I've not speeded the hands up for the club head to get, gain momentum. Okay. So when we come down, so this angular effect, so this endless belt effect. So imagine this is the club coming down on the downswing. So we're here, and it comes down. My hands come down the straight line. Okay, then they start to curve round through impact and the club head is thrown out through centrifugal force and it gathers speed, yet my hands are continuing at the same speed as they were all the way down. So my hands come down the straight line. That's quite hard to understand as the hands come down the straight line. Now, the eureka moment, when we aimed left, up the top, and then when we come back down, I feel as though that pulling sensation, we talked about the caravan getting pulled, I feel as though because my lower half of my body is left already, my hands get pulled down in this straight line. Then the club head spun out, my body goes this way, my club head goes that way because of centrifugal force and angular momentum. Okay? It's, it just throws the club head at the golf ball without having to apply any more force. You can't argue with physics. So my, my club travel, my hands travel at the same speed down here and the same amount of effort from hand travel down there as well, yet club head's going faster. The only way I can really describe that is angular momentum is this, this hand is a speedboat, this hand is a skier, so it's water skiing, okay, they're going in a straight line, going in a straight line, great, same speed, let's say, I don't know, I don't even know anything about speeds of boats, in knots, let's call it 30 miles an hour, they're both going 30 miles an hour and they'll continue in a straight line at that speed. Hands, club head. Now, if I create angular momentum here, if the, if the skier turns his ski to an angle, he turns his ski to an angle, then what will happen is the club head or the skier will overtake the boat. So continue along, tilts his skis and then the skier will catch up with the boat. Okay, so it'll go around and catch up with the boat. So therefore we've gained more speed Yet the boat's still going to the same space, same pace. So we're going down, tilts the skis, comes round, catch up with the boat. Then the boat has to continue back for him to get back in there, or he'll outride the boat. So that's the same thing that's happening with the club head. So the hands keep going at the same speed, all the way down. So we come, aim and left, we come down a straight line, up top of the swing, come dip to here. Then the hands come down a straight line. They don't go straight down the way, but they come down at an angle, down the straight line. So that's linear, down straight line down. And then they come round this corner, around the bottom of the endless belt effect. Then the skier gets thrown out and passes the boat. And that's where club head speed is generated. So there's no extra force applied by the hands through impact than there is coming down there. Because centrifugal force and angular momentum have taken care of it all. You can't argue with physics. Please keep off the grass. There is no grass. Course closed, I think. On the endless belt effect, the size of the circles at either end of the belt will vary with the club you're using. So a wedge will be a smaller circle, so the hands are more aggressively turning round, and be because the shaft angle lies steeper, so we're going to come down, down, and then the hands flick back up. So it throws the club head down a steeper angle of attack. Whereas the driver, because the club head's longer and further away from you, the curve at the bottom of the endless belt will be more round. There's a shallower angle of attack and because the club's longer. So the club head will be travelling faster. The hands are still at the same speed, but the club's travelling a lot faster with the driver because the shaft's longer. And it's more rounded at the bottom of the endless belt effect. Let me show you. This will do. T Rex will do. So here is our endless belt for our wedge. 
So the club's coming down this side and it's quite an aggressive curve because the club heads, the club shaft is so upright. So therefore the arc that the hands take at the bottom of the of the, the swing through impact is quite a narrow arc. So this is narrow in here. So therefore the club comes down steeply. Swings round, hits ball. Thank you, T-Rex. And let's find another piece. So that's how a short iron comes down steeply. Um, try to find somewhere that you'll be able to see this. Here we go. Still in the picture, yep. And driver, so driver's going to be a lot wider up here. There we go, so we're coming down here. Club's coming down here. And it's going round a larger circle. The hands are going round a larger circle round here before it exits up this way somewhere. And therefore the club's longer, so it's coming in shallower towards impact with the ball and then going up there, although its club is travelling a lot faster. The reason it's coming in shallower is because the shaft lies a lot flatter at address and the one before came down a lot steeper in here and out here because the shaft lie angle is a lot more upright. Wedge and driver. Video done. Video done. Found a wee spot under the veranda. Brilliant. I hope that's explained things. It's quite a hard one. The Eureka moment. Aim left. Watch that video. Watch that video first. Um, the Eureka moment. Aimed left. And I hope you can realise that the feeling I get now is when I aim left like that, my hands get pulled down in a straight line. It's linear. Linear. Hands get pulled down in a straight line and then the curve at the bottom which throws the club out to the right so my body goes left, my club head goes out to the right, I hit a draw because of angular momentum, centrifugal force and an understanding of the endless belt um, so guys give it a go, let me know some feedback below as I say it was quite technical but relevant, you can take what you want from it, make it as simple as you want dissect all or go a whole hog, go right in there you can't argue with physics you can't argue with physics Thank you.